Joshua June this morning. So, real quick, I got a lot of stuff to talk about, so I just want to make sure you're in the right place. So, notice the title. It says, Getting Started. Here's the deal. This is part one of part two. There are two parts. There's a part this afternoon being done by a guy named James. Did, are you still? Did you? James. Nope. Okay. James Petty. Let me explain. I'm going to go through the very, very basics, lightning fast, show you how this works, why it works the way that it does, and give you some code that you can use and play with wherever you want. But it's the basics, boys and girls. James is going to take you into the, his real world implementation that he does at the office of GEO. I'll talk about Microsoft and you know Azure Stack does it, all that. But so he's going to go hardcore advanced. Does that make sense? Okay. So if you're not interested in the basics of GEO, because you already know it or something, go somewhere else. But it could be fun. So here we go. Everybody, pull out your phone. Don't take all day. <laughs> <laughs> take a picture of that. Did you stand away from the <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> now, guys, that will go live tomorrow afternoon after my last session. There will be code. There will be slides. There will be happiness and joy. Yes? Good. <laughs> the one up here, if you want more details on this, and there is about a four-hour video series I did on, on, on GEO, it will get you from zero to hero up to being able to implement it. And there's a lot of unique things in that series because it's based upon what Microsoft dog foods and they've been successful at and things that they haven't. So it's kind of a nifty thing. Yeah, we good? Now, if you haven't seen one of my presentations before, I never use slides past this point. Oops. Now, don't, no, I know you're kind of like, oh, no, he's going to have lots of, these are good slides, and then I'll show you some code, yeah? Okay, so hang on. Let's muscle up, and it'll all be good. At least that's the theory. So you guys know remoting, right? Yeah? Um, so you know the basics of remoting. You know, if you went to Richard's session, well, you know much more than the basics. But um, here's the idea. Now, I'm going to get the requirements in a second, but you guys know what remoting is. You want to get out there to do something, so you're, oops, come on, slide. You're going to connect to an endpoint. You guys know that? There's commands. You can see the endpoints. You're going to see them here. Normally, when you use remoting, it just does pass-through authentication, or you use different creds, but you connect to the endpoint, and you have full control over the entire machine. Yes? Yeah. Well, that sucks. Do you ever make mistakes? No. Never. Often. <laughs> You know how you know how Snover says that he's he's deeply flawed. That's why PowerShell is the way that it is. He a lot smarter than me, so I am like seriously deeply flawed. Because if I'm not screwing up, I'm not doing much at all. So here's the thing: the idea is that we can decide what you're allowed to do. Now, if how many uh, former Exchange people do I have? Okay. Now, well, I was going to say, how many of you haven't learned that you're former? <laughs> I was one, too. So, ah. Now, when Exchange 2010 came out, they came out and they talked about RBAC and all this kind of stuff, this really cool way to set permissions. And if you muscled up to figure out how to actually do that through PowerShell, congrats, because you're one of the five people that could actually pull it off. Then in 2013, they made it a little bit easier. Thanks to all of the hard work that the exchange team did, we now have GIA. This was originally written by Jeffrey Snover to help with a problem that was distributed using DSC. That is not the case anymore. You can do this anywhere, anytime, and it's easy to deploy, either whether you use DSC or not. But the concept is this. When you connect to that remoting endpoint, I can decide not only what commandlets you're allowed to run. I can decide what parameters on those commandlets you're allowed to use. And I can decide what you're allowed to type in as a value. That's how granular we can get. Now, you might be saying, oh, Jesus, this could take me till the next millennia to figure this crap. It's not as hard as you might think it is. It is an iterative process, though, and that's what we're going to talk about. So some of the requirements. Look, guys, these haven't changed. You can run GIA as long as you're running a modern operating system within reason. 
If you're running 2003, you already know you're screwed. It's not going to work on that. Uh, but other than that, what's it? Uh, GIA works with all the stuff now, so you can implement this immediately if you wanted to. Um, so here's how this works. Again, I'm going to give you the same picture. There's a couple of things that you're going to need to make GIA work. If you Google GIA, I'm going to warn you right now. Be careful, you might be looking at information for the first version of it, which is completely different. So you want to look at this one, and that's all I'm going to show you. I'm not even going to show you what the first version looked like, because it doesn't matter. Now, you're going to need two things. You're going to need two configuration files on that machine. I'm going to explain in detail what those puppies are. Well, kind of detail. One of them is going to be called a session configuration. Don't panic, I'll show it to you. But what that does is you define who is allowed to use the endpoint. And with that, well, OK, Bob, you're allowed to use the endpoint. With that, you also specify the second file you need, which is, now guys, I say this wrong constantly. I don't know why I, I don't. Um, it's the role capability file. I might say compatibility file because my brain can't function. I'm wrong when I say that. You yell it out and correct me. It's capability, OK? Now, the reason I'm telling you that it's capabilities is because, wait a minute, that's what that file now defines. What commandlets, what functions, what capabilities are you allowed to have down to the granular level of parameters and arguments? So how many files do we have? What does the session config do? <laughs> Who? And what does the role capability file do? What? I'm so glad you guys can read. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so I want to talk about virtual accounts. Some of you may already know about these. Originally, when I was doing this in the video, this was brand new. This whole new GIA thing was brand new. And so a lot of people didn't know about this, but, and you may not, but here's what's happening. We never let you, with intent, and you've probably heard this this week, be an admin in the previous definition of an admin. Previous definition of an admin is the godlike creature that has all power. What's wrong with that? Hmm? What's wrong with giving you all power? Do any of you make mistakes? Often. There's one. The other thing is, is I know you guys aren't, but have you ever experienced an admin that was a thief? That was looking at things like payroll and things like that? Well, this is why. This is some of the reasons why you can't be allowed to do that. But that doesn't mean we're hosing you. We're going to give you options, but we need to be careful about how we do this to maintain the highest level of security we can. Here's one of the things. When you use PowerShell remoting and you're not using GA, you connect to it, and you're, you're elevated as admin. Yay! You have all powers over that box. We don't want that. When you connect, you're going to connect as, and I, I don't know how to really get this into your brain in other ways other than a, you're going to be nothing more than a user. I know, I know, you just want to, yeah, I, sorry, that was before lunch, that was probably not cold. Anyways, you, yeah, no, you know how you, you know, and well, at my office, we do, we have a user account, that we, just a regular user that we do our regular stuff with, and then if we need, we sign in as this godlike creature, yeah, it's the godlike creature account that you didn't sign out of that's screwing us over with the malware, and your buddy sitting next to you that's going, hey, I wonder if this guy makes more than me. <laughs> now. So when you connect, you're connecting as just a regular user. What does a regular user have the ability to do on a server? Pretty much crap. That's the way we like it. But you need to do stuff. You need to be elevated while you're there. So we're going to elevate you with a virtual account. Here's the best thing. I'm not going to have time to actually show you the account and how it looks, but it is, let me bring the little sign up, regular user. You'll connect, you'll get elevated as a virtual account. This account has a unique name that dies when that session dies. People all the time say, you know, one of the things that impacts it is, you know, you're signed in as admin, you can get malware that's gonna use that information to keep you signed and do its mean things. Uh, 
guys, the account dies. So if you got malware, guess what the malware no longer can do? You, you need this. If you were at Lee Holmes's talk, if, you, if you're thinking, well, I should start. If you were at Lee Holmes's talk and you can still think, uh, uh, so, but you gotta think about this. We have a solution that works. And it's not a project. That's the hardest part. It's not a project. It's not, well, we're going to do this GIA thing, and then next month we're going to move on to something SQL. No, this is an iterative process that you must constantly, this becomes part of your daily, weekly thought processes because that's what it's going to take. However, the value you're getting from this, how much do you know about Azure Stack? You heard Jeffrey, right, on uh, the first day talking about, you know, it takes two keys to become God. You have one of them, one. We have the other. We're symbiotic. Here's the deal. When you do become God, we sometimes call that break the glass, we're going to track everything you do. We're going to log it. We're going to put it in a transcript. I mean everything. Everything you type, all the values you get. And by God, put a little workflow in that. If somebody breaks the glass, those transcripts immediately go to auditors, whoever, managers, whatever, so that everybody's aware that something has occurred and what exactly happened. You don't have that admin sitting there at 3 o'clock in the morning trying to figure out what they were doing in there at that time. So this is really, really, really kind of cool. And i got to really start moving along if I want to show you some code. So oh, let's try this. Nope, that's not the code I want to show you. Don't freak out. <laughs> oh, that was funny. I just dropped the mic. I was going to do it at the end of the session, but hey. <laughs> so here's the, oh, this isn't one of those things I can touch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow, this presentation went down the hill really fast. So um, I, this is just one file that you can play with. I put everything in there. My idea in this file is you don't have to pre-set up anything. I've got the code in there that'll do everything that I'm showing you, right? So if you just want to play with it on a, a VM or something, you can. Now, um, so uh, here's what I'm going to do is, first of all, I want to show you something. So I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to create some folders. I'm going to create a folder called test. Look at these two commandlets. What do you think the role capability commandlet does? creates the role capability file. What do you think the session configuration file command does? Now, remember, I told you, you need two things. You need these two files. How do you make them? You run those commandlets. Now, good news, better news, awesome news. These are good commandlets. These commandlets have parameters for everything you're going to need, like what functions, what modules should this person be allowed to use, what commandlets, what parameters, what arguments? That's good. You got a crap ton of parameters to do that for you. So you can make beautiful, long wrapping lines, and then you can put all those back ticks in there so you can make it try to look pretty. What's going to happen the first time you touch it to make a change? You're going to forget those back ticks that you can't see, and those long lines are really unreadable, readable, whatever. You can't. Uh, let me show you another way. This is better. It's not best, but it's better. So let me, first of all, I'm going to run these. I'm going to create the folder. I'm going to run these. I think I forgot how to get to a function key on this all of a sudden. So let me do this. Where's my, oh, crap. My... <laughs> um, I just have to find my function keys at the moment. How did I forget those? I'm old. <laughs> I am. Uh, let's see. Is there a graphical? Is anybody uh, using VS Code and use a graphical way to do this? You can do it from the Go menu, I think. Oh, so and. I think it's, uh, might not be Go. It's one of them there. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, uh, this will be fun. Uh, if somebody <laughs> sees it. Well, and by the way, what a perfect demonstration of why 
graphicals are a pain in the ass. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Start without the. Oh, I lost my highlights. You know what? There's a reason I put a break statement at the very beginning of the script. <laughs> Think that through. Uh, so let me highlight it again. Is that going to happen to me all the time? For some, I had a much, much better way of doing this, but now I can't figure it out. <laughs> Shut up! Um, anyways, so... Oh, no, go back to this. So here's the deal. I'm going to launch these little guys, I think. And now I really have to hustle if I'm going to do it this way. Um, come on, code. Bring them up. No, I don't think it did it. Uh, Right-clicking at the moment is also very difficult. <laughs> Stop laughing at me. Now, there's something on the screen I need you to see while I'm screwing around trying to get this puppy to run. I want you to notice the extensions on these files. That is something that and they were on the graphic you, you, you need to pay attention to. Um, now, oops. Couldn't, couldn't paste them into the bottom panel. That's not helping me. <laughs> Screw it. Where's PowerShell? Um, let's do it the old-fashioned way. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to do it this way. Oops, I put it at test, I think. Didn't I? Yeah. Oops. Please tell me you ran. OK, so this is getting any more entertaining. Let me just do this, because I got a lot of code here to try to get through. Oops, I just think maybe I found my, or at least a way. You're still not doing it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Let me do this. It doesn't look like it's actually running anything. Uh, do this. That ran, didn't it? I think so. No. No. All right, so I'm going to give you the code. You can run through it. But I'm going to show you this code because I need you to see this. The only thing you're going to see of me running it is it going, okay. So, yeah. Now, here's the deal. When you run these, the files that get created are very detailed. If you open them up, they're all commented out, but they have examples of what to do. So here's the deal. You can use the parameters to do all of this, or you can directly edit the file. Anybody have a problem with that? Besides you? Yeah, besides me. <laughs> Dudes, it's going to be really hard to not screw up everything every time you touch this file. It's confusing. It's complicated. The syntax is picky. If you knew something else, you could use the commandlets, and it would automatically build these files for you. And it would be easy to maintain. You know, have you ever heard about something called splatting? I don't splat often, but when I do, it's Gia. So, yeah, I know it was a crappy joke, but hey. Um, so, here's the deal. I also in here have users that I use in this example that just create. So, AD commandlets are just creating some users. Uh, down here, here's some more directories. Let me explain what you're seeing. Here's what we're going to do. If you're Googling and you see something about uh, a, a GIA resource kit being done through uh, 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 a DSC, that's the old one. The new one, G is part of your modules. You guys know what modules are, right? No. <laughs> so what, what this does is we're going to put a, a, a folder right off of your module. So when you make a module, like in program folders, you know, Windows PowerShell modules, you just make that folder, and then you make another folder underneath. Take a look up here. You'll see it. It's a, oh, you can't see it. But you guys know how to make a module. I don't have to really sit here and show you. But look, I'm creating a module in here called GIA Print Operators. That's a module. Here's the best part. Notice that extra folder there called the role capabilities. That's where that role capabilities file is going to go. I have a question for you. The role capabilities file goes with the module. 
If you want to deploy this to 10 machines, take a guess. What do you think you need to do? Uh, X copy. Yep. You're not done yet. Now, put some juice into it. If you've got a pipeline or you've got products, you can use DSC for this. What's really cool is if you have a pull server and you put the modules on the pull server, when the boxes need it, they get it. It's not just your modules, it's Microsoft modules. It's everybody's modules. That means G is with everything. You can attach it to everything, including your own stuff. I wrote 50 functions, but that guy over there, he's uh, pretty smart. I'll let him have 40 of them. But that guy, oh, he scares me when he gets a cup of coffee. He gets three. You have complete control over your stuff, too. Is that cool? OK. So. You make a module, you add in an extra folder, and let me show you my little trick. I know this looks a little bit confusing, but take a look here. Notice I am splatting. I've got a variable there, and I want you to take a look at some of the things I have in this. Um, let's take a look. Well, there's author, company name. What modules do you want to import? Well, in this print operator, uses their endpoint, what do I want them to have? Well, let's see, what does a print operator need? What, what, what does every print operator, who here has been a, or is a print operator? You all have been print operators, stop it. <laughs> now, what's the most common task as a print operator when something goes wrong, what's the first thing you do? Okay, the spooler service, not the workstation service, Moron, the spooler service. <laughs> this prevents mistakes because I am going to make sure that the, and I'll bring it up here so you can see it. I am going to make sure that things like restart service. I don't want them to have all of the parameters. They're a print operator. They need to specify the name parameter and Hey, how many of you have written advanced functions in PowerShell? Validate set. They're allowed to type the word spooler. You know if they type a different word? I swear it's hilarious. I'm going to see if I can restart or crash this service or this server or something. I'm not typing spooler. I'm going to type in bits. OK, that was supposed to be funny because it doesn't do anything to you. Uh, <laughs> That's why you see it in every freaking book we write and stuff like that, because it can't hurt you. Anyways, so he types in bits. Gets a big, pretty error message. If you do advanced functions and you do things like validate sets, you get a pretty error message that says, hey, the only thing you're allowed to type is spooler. <laughs> I've locked them down. So here's what I really need to think about. The technology is now easy to do. And the reason that I splat I can maintain this. I can run this 50 times a day, making small changes rapidly to get the role perfect. Am I going to make the role perfect? Nope. The people using the role are going to help make me perfect with it. And it's going to take time. They're going to say, you know what? I'm a print operator. You let me restart the spooler service, but occasionally I need to get some IP address information. Can you let me see some IP information? Well, certainly I can let you have some IP info. Where do I have it here? Woo! I'm going to let you use the net TCP IP, but do you see what I'm doing? Only letting them have get, because I don't want them to be able to change anything. So I'm defining this role. What should my print operators be able to do? I'm going to start with the basics. I'm going to get this role out to them. They're going to connect and use it. And then they're going to say, you know what? Almost every other day, I need this too. OK, from the print module. OK, I'll do that. In other words, we'll work together to make the right role. But here's the thing. You, as the user that's going to manage the printers, you don't make the decision. You make a request. We decide whether that's the right thing for you. If it's not, it's not. Now, we do this for your roles. Is anybody, so I want you to think about this. Just like something like the you know, Azure Stack, which does this amazingly well, at some point you're going to need the, oh crap, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, 
I just signed in and I'm a print operator and I can restart the spoolers, but there's so much crap going wrong, I need to restart some servers and make some changes and I can't do it. Hey, if there's a fire, what do you do? Well, that's cool, I like that. As you're running out the door, call the fire department. You know what would be really nice? How about telling your friends there might be a fire and you need to leave? So, you know, break the glass, hit the button, at least be courteous, and then you can run like hell. Um, <laughs> don't get in my way. <laughs> um, so yeah, break the glass. You can have an endpoint that gives you the godlike thing, but we can, as I mentioned, it's going to get logged. We're going to track everything you do, add a little workflow. So you can break the glass if it's an emergency and solve the problem, but everybody's going to know about it. Now with Azure Stack, Jeffrey's sitting right here. With Azure Stack, I, did, I, just, I just love that. It takes two. I don't know. Uh, I meant to ask this early on. Who are my security guys? The guys that put no in innovation. <laughs> Um, I want you to think about something. You, your security people, so Jeffrey said, you know, DevOps is really two things, doing small things rapidly. And what was number two? Yeah, don't be an asshole to the people you work with. I just said that. I can't believe I just said that. Don't be a jerk to the people you work with. Here's the thing. Devs, IT guys, We've been fighting and arguing. We blame security guys. Think about security guys for a minute. Why don't you like security guys? And why don't security guys like you? Because you run up to them going, I'm going to install this thing that's going to let me manage everything in the world. It's going to be awesome. What's a security guy going to say? Nope. Let me explain to you how PowerShell remoting works. So let me show you how the security and the protocol works. As a matter of fact, here's an entire write-up that PowerShell.org created as a free ebook, so to help you get the information that you need so that you can realize this ain't a thing. Security guy looks at it, realizes, we let SSH, we might as well let this. In other words, you start talking to each other using each other's languages and realizing what, you're, what problems you're trying to fix. Security guy needs to have security updates on now. Zero day, I don't have time to wait for you and you're fighting. No, we got a maintenance window in a month or two. We'll figure it, no, work together. And if you're DevOps, then it's like, we'll put that in now. But see, you start working and you start working with each other and helping each other with this stuff. Anyways, you define the roles. You have a break glass option. There is something else you have to do. You got to create that session configuration. I've got an example here of splatting it. And actually, James is going to talk more about that particular file, so I'm going to leave it to him. Um, and the next thing you need to do, and I give you the code for it, is these endpoints don't just magically happen. You have to register the endpoint. Now, I am going to put, it's not in there now, but when I, this repo goes live, I have a cool piece of code. It's also, if you go watch the video series, you can download it. It's what I was using and still do when I do deployments that are non-DSE deployments of GIA. I have this great little thing that runs at each machine to do the registrations. Now, when you do a registration, you're running a command, but there's something you're messing with remoting. So WinRM's got to do a restart, the service does, and it does, and it does it automatically for you. It'll give you a message saying, I need to restart this. Sometimes it doesn't. So here's the thing. It can be frustrating if you don't realize the service never started, because it's never going to work, but you'll sit there for days troubleshooting it because you're too stupid to look up to see if the service is, come on, that's funny. That's like, I, I, and I, I did, 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 yeah, real fast. I was uh, an entire array. I was doing an update, or not an update, an upgrade, doing kind of like a migrate. The entire array stopped working suddenly. I came back from it, you know, and it's, the array is gone. And I was doing all kinds of stuff, I don't know. And I couldn't figure it, this is a long time ago. I was on network, and I couldn't figure that crap out. Call up Noel. And you know, when you get those people, you know, they, they, they don't know who you are or what you know. So they got to start with the things like, um, is it plugged in? Is it turned on? Is it, eh? well, I don't like that. So they come up and they say, well, is it plugged in? You know, is it turned on? I don't die, not give me to a real engineer. And, uh, oh, uh, let me call you right back. Ah, that's how it works. So yeah, turn that bad boy on. Now, once it's registered in the code that I give you in here, 
You can modify it any way you want, but what I like to do is register the endpoint and make sure that I restart the service. That way I don't have to deal with any weirdness. And now you can test it. And here's the thing I want you to see. Now I wrote this because I'm already signed in as an administrator, but usually you'd be signed in as a user. You just do enter PS session, the box you want to hit, and the name of the configuration that we gave it. In this case, print operator. Boom, that's it. You'll get in. Now, what happens to a regular user normally if they try to do enter PS session, go to a, a remote machine? Access denied. Well, now when they try to hit that endpoint, that endpoint has that configuration file that says, who is allowed? Oh, are you in, oh, you're in the, and then you can do it like for Active Directory groups, individual usernames, however you want to do it. Oh, you're in the, and I like to create groups for GIA operators that are GIA under, underscore whatever, you know, they, they, they do. And, oh, you're in that group, therefore you are allowed to use remoting and we'll connect you to that endpoint and we'll read that capability file and that's what you're allowed to do. So as a user, which you will be, and make no doubt about it, this is going to be your life someday. Maybe not today, but it will be. You will connect and you will get in and you will only get what you're allowed to have, period. And it's this easy. If you splat it, you can edit and get another one out because you run this and just it makes those files. And here's the best part. If you've registered the endpoint once and you're just making changes to the capability file, you don't have to re-register it. So you can sit there and do that over, over, over. It's not working, now it's working. Okay, great, keep going, keep going. Let's do it better, make more, make more. So, oh, don't wig out on me. <laughs> All right, now that you took me out of my presentation, bro, how do I get back into it? There we go, thank you. And you jump slides. So, a couple of things real quick, and then, because I'm running out of time here. First of all, see James this afternoon if you are thinking anything with Gia, because he's going to go through all this. I just want to give you some uh, uh, centralized deployment I've already talked about. This is basically a copy deploy. However, if you are doing configuration management, you are, right? Okay. Don't, it, it's okay. You don't have to lie to me, but anyways. If you're doing configuration management, it doesn't matter what product you're using. DSC is a platform. It works with Puppet and Chef. And you guys know this. Or you can do it yourself with DSC, and you can do the deployments that way, which is the way I usually do them, because I'm doing the pipeline stuff. So this is actually kind of cool that you can do it with DSC. It's all great. You can copy it out. It's very easy. Now, a couple of things that... Um, and you guys know this, Microsoft sees you know, a lot of benefits to not letting, you know one of the best stories I heard? You guys see uh, Jeffrey was talking about uh, uh, Azure Stack, he brought up the, uh, the uh, diagram of the architecture of Azure Stack. You know what the best part about that diagram is? <laughs> you don't care, because you ain't allowed to touch it anyways, ever. So why do you care what the internal internals are? It doesn't matter, you can't touch it. Think about this. Microsoft gave you the finest security tools in the world. I have a question for you. Are you aware of, now do not answer this question. Are you aware of any user that has elevated privileges or more permissions to shares than they're supposed to have? Who's the security problem? The user? or you. We gave you the best tools. I say we as if I did it. I didn't do crap. Um, Microsoft gave us the best security tools. What we didn't do was what we were told to do. So guess what we can do now? All of those 30 years of crappy security, oh, I'm going to have to pull all that out? No, screw it. Go to GIA. We're going to lock that thing down and end the problem, period. You gotta be excited about that. I know you feel like, well, don't take power away. We're not taking power away. We're controlling when you use your powers so that you only use your powers for good. And if you don't, we're gonna know it and then do bad things to you. So, yeah, kinda sorta. You can already guess what some of the challenges are. Hey, print operator, 
You manage printers through a GIA endpoint. What's your print operator? Most print operators today are going to say. <laughs> okay, first of all, I expect. Blah, blah, blah. What did you just say? <laughs> um, yeah, let me show you how to do this. They don't know PowerShell. Here's the thing, guys. We are at, well, we're past 11 years now of PowerShell being out. I am up to here hearing that, uh, done with hearing that excuse. Well, I haven't had a chance over the last 11 years to get off my lazy ass. Well, you know what? You need to help them because they don't understand why. I hear from guys all the time going, I was, I was going to get in that PowerShell thing. I just don't really need it. They don't know why. It's not that they're stupid. Nobody's explaining it to them. You have that ability. You can get them on board and get in learning. But your G implementation is going to suck unless you got some people that know PowerShell. That's going to make it easier. Or you've got some graphical utilities that use PowerShell remoting. Because guess what those utilities are going to then they're going to be restrained or constrained by Gia. So there's a lot of work that goes into this, but when you are successful with this, every day that you're making a role a little bit better, you're reducing the attack surface for your company. It's an iterative process, but I need you to understand. It isn't you get all the benefits at the end five years from now. You get the benefits from the very first thing you're doing. You're improving your corporate security. That's a pretty good story to tell leadership team. What do you guys do today? Tightened up security. Oh, good, thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> what do you guys do today? Uh, well, we had to rebuild a server. And can't you guys do that crap faster? Get a pipeline, get, see, but see, now you can do things like get a pipeline so you can react to things faster and you can spend more time on GIA and your security and really pay off for the company that way. You guys have known that, have, you listen to somebody like Lee Holmes, it looks pretty bleak because it's pretty freaking bleak. Did you guys watch Zuckerberg yesterday? <laughs> yeah, he was really prepped well, wasn't he? <laughs> Because I didn't think you know, he could put two English words together without you know, being confused because he's so smart, the language doesn't even really need to be used. But yeah, he's, he's saying, look, guys, we're doing our best and we're getting creamed. We need help. So it, it's tough out there. Well, here's your help. So now, a couple of concepts, and it's going to be really quick. We have something called just-in-time. Those of you that work with Azure, you can do this. Those of you that have Active Directory can do this. The I concept to just-in-time is this. I give you the ability to use GIA. You're a print operator. But the only time, think about this, the only time I want you to have the privilege of using remoting as a print operator is when we have a problem. If we don't have a problem, you don't need it, you shouldn't be messing with it. Because if you're messing with it, you might cause a problem. So, just in time is, think of it like this way. Let's say you had a ticketing system where the ticket comes in, of the printer XYZ is not printing. All right, I'll take that ticket, boom, now you have been given the privilege and it's going to end on a scheduled time. So, let's just say, ah, the printer's not printing, boom, you got 15 minutes to figure that sucker out before we pull. Oh, crap. <laughs> well, you, thank God restarting the spooler service is quick. <laughs> but you get the idea. So just in time. Gia. So it, Gia. Just in time, just enough administration. Is that kind of a cool thing? People are doing this now. This is not, uh, is this like sometime in the future? No, today, now. Companies are doing this. Some companies really want to do this. They're just a little bit slower at it. Um, so uh, I also have a slide that you're giving where I just mentioned the technologies for uh, 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 GIA. So um, I'm going to open up for questions as I start running out of here, but here's the thing. This was to get you started so that you can hit that real world one with James Petty this afternoon. Well, he'll go through and show you how he does it at his company and how he's been doing it. So you get some real good experience there. Yes, sir. <coughs> Gia, uh, the endpoints, are those only for PS remoting, or can you also do those for locally logged in people? Uh, you, if you have them go through remoting 
to the local machine, yeah, you have to connect through a endpoint. So I, I do this all the time, because this actually irritates me, where, where what I'll be doing is I'm just playing with some VM lab machines to test out some code or something, and I'll go to myself and I'll be restricted. Damn it, I forgot that I had this. So yeah, um, you can do that, as long as it goes through the endpoint. Um, guys, again, this is where the stuff's gonna be. I'm gonna start strolling out there. I'll be out there if you wanna talk about it, that kind of thing. Yes, sir, go ahead. Have we got time for that? Um, so I, I will assume that um, this doesn't apply if you SSH into the system, right? Pardon me? Uh, this will not apply, the configuration uh, file won't apply if you SSH into the I, I didn't hear the last part. <laughs> We're talking about PowerShell remoting. <laughs> Who knows what may or may not happen in the future. So, um, is, 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 do you kind of get the idea here? The, it, don't be afraid of this. This is for all our benefit. So, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.